Hello and welcome to GHC's pre-World Health Assembly webinar. Um, today we're going to actually look or have a, a preview of what's to come with the World Health Assembly. Uh, my name is Liz Colway. I manage external affairs for Global Health Council and I'm joined by my colleagues um, from the GHC team who will be helping me out with this webinar. So before we jump in, I know a few folks are still um, dialing in, so um, I'm just going to go over some uh, logistics of the webinar. So if you do have a question, okay, now you should be able to see my screen. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over some logistics of the webinar. Um, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please be sure to use the chat box um, on your GoToWebinar panel. Um, we'll be sure to get to all questions, or as many as we can, at the end of the webinar. Um, and there also might be a few moments throughout that we're going to take uh, some polls from our audience members. So we'll be sure to, again, use that chat box. Um, and also, if you can just note um, who you are and if you represent an organization, that would be great as well. So the agenda for today's webinar, um, we already went over some logistics. Um, I'm going to give a very brief overview of the 72nd World Health Assembly with um, some fast facts of dates um, and deadlines to remember. Uh, for those that are joining or going to WHA for the first time, we will have a more formal delegate orientation um, mid-May, so right before the start of WHA, but I will not get into those details right now. Um, and then I'm going to go into GHC's presence at WHA, including our delegation, um, the, uh, the statement process, or how you can submit statements as a GHC member and delegate, um, and then look over some side events or ones that we know of so far, um, and then also, again, pull our audience to see who is organizing side events and who might want to share some information. Um, and then Lois, our executive director, is going to go over some core messaging uh, for are from GHC, uh, really for um, the global health community. Um, and then again, at the end, we'll take some Q&A. So before I get started, just a brief overview about Global Health Council. I know many of the folks on the phone are members or are already involved with Global Health Council, which is great. Um, but for those who might be joining us for the first time, uh, we are a membership organization. We support and connect advocates, implementers, and stakeholders around global health priorities worldwide. Um, our members um, and partners represent a, ride, a wide range of uh, global health sectors, so including academia, um, implementing global health partners or NGOs, um, the private sector, uh, and, and many advocates as well. Um, so we re represent the collaborative voice on, of the global health community on key issues. Uh, we also work to convene our stakeholders around key priorities um, and then actively engage with decision makers to influence global health pro uh, policy. Uh, and you can learn more about us and our coalition um, on our website. So I've included the link here um, on this uh, slide. So uh, a bit about this webinar series. This is the first of a three-part um, webinar series on the World Health Assembly um, to really prepare our advocates uh, for the proceedings um, and also to, um, again, come up with some core messaging that we can um, uh, promote during the World Health Assembly and beyond. Um, so just a quick note that these webinar recordings um, and PowerPoint presentations will be available on the website a few days after um, each uh, live session. Um, our next uh, pre-WHA webinar will be a deeper dive on topics such as the universal, universal health coverage and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And that'll take place um, next Friday, April 26th at 9 a.m. And then we will have a final pre-WHA webinar um, around uh, sharing some intelligence from uh, senior officials at the US Department of Health and Human Services um, Office of Global Affairs. So we've sent an invite to those folks. Um, they've joined us in past years um, to talk about what the US delegation will be focused on and promoting at the upcoming WHA. Um, so again, please feel free to sign up um, for those webinars. Again, if you can't make them, uh, we'll be sure to send out the recordings um, and slides after the presentations. 
So a quick poll here, um, just wanted to see how many people on the phone are actually um, headed to the World Health Assembly this year. So I'll give everyone about 15 seconds to fill it out um, and then we'll get started. Great, thanks for sharing um, and participating in that poll. So it looks like a majority of those on the line uh, will be attending and there's still a bunch that won't be, but uh, will be following along online, uh, which is great because there are still several sessions that are um, actually available via live stream. Um, WHO uh, usually has proceedings online that you can follow live or you can also um, look at past recordings as well. Um, and then some, but not all, of the side events will also be live streamed too, um, although it can obviously be very early for some that are following along um, from the U.S., uh, but again, there's still opportunity to engage there. So WHA this year opens up on Monday, May 20th um, at 9.30 um, a.m., uh, Central European time, and we'll close the following Tuesday, um, May 28th. Um, throughout the week, uh, or I should say, uh, many of our members and partners are going to be traveling to Geneva a bit in advance because there are also side events um, and meetings going on on Sunday, the day before. Um, so usually it's Sunday through about Wednesday when a ball, uh, I guess the, the most um, or uh, the largest number of side events and meetings take place, although people do stay throughout the week so that they can um, participate in other meetings and also share statements on the floor of the World Health Assembly. Um, so most of the proceedings take place um, on the grounds of the Palais. Um, and you do need an official uh, credential or badge to get into the grounds of the Palais for those um, official proceedings. Um, in advance of WHA, you can access um, documentation such as the provisional agenda and supporting documents online. Um, there, the site is actually live um, and it does have, um, the uh, WHO has already published a provisional agenda um, and which includes a number of items that I know our community um, is closely tracking. So I encourage people to check out the website. Um, a note that um, the agenda can change on a daily basis during WHA. Um, so I encourage you to check it each day um, of the assembly uh, for that updated agenda. And you'll see um, from this screenshot on the left side, um, these are not live links yet, but um, each day there'll be a live link with um, the updated agenda. Um, and there will also be a preliminary um, document that's uh, released uh, usually about a week before WHA, including all of the um, technical briefings um, and, and some additional information. Uh, so again, strongest, uh, I guess, bit of advice is to check this website on a regular basis. So I mentioned the technical briefings. Um, these are lunchtime briefings hosted Tuesday through Friday by WHO technical staff. Um, again, they're going to be in the preliminary uh, journal. Um, and they are during a time where the official proceedings are not taking place. Um, so people can attend um, and not be distracted by other things going on um, in the Palais. There are also member state meetings. Um, so these are WHO member states that apply in advance um, to host side of meetings on a variety of topics. Um, those events have not yet been published, although um, you can find uh, applications that were under consideration online. 
Um, so these are events that may or may not have been accepted, um, but you can kind of uh, see what types of topics uh, member states are following this year. There are also official non-state actor side events. Um, there are a total of 10 this year. They're 50 minutes each. Um, they take place um, in the evenings, again, after the WHA formal proceedings. Um, and they'll be taking place Tuesday through the following um, Monday evening. Um, and you can find a list of those official um, non-state actor side events, again, online with the link that I provided here. So again, that was a very brief overview. Um, I will go into some more detail about what to expect at WHA uh, during our uh, new delegate orientation in mid-May. Um, but for now, I'm gonna jump into GHC's presence. Um, so this year, we'll be sending a delegation similar to years past. Um, I have some quick facts from last year's delegation um, when we had uh, nearly 100 uh, civil society representatives um, join us at the 71st World Health Assembly. Um, this year, we are probably going to have a similar um, composition of our delegation. Uh, we've also uh, encouraged uh, patient champions to sign up this year. So we've actually launched an initiative with Medtronic Foundation. Um, that call for application went out a few weeks ago. Um, and that's to host those patient champion voices at a number of different um, global venues, including WHA. Um, so we'll likely have about two to three um, patient champions joining us. Um, and if you are organizing side events and are looking for more of that patient voice, um, you know, we'd be happy to see if there's a fit with our, our patient champion. So definitely keep that in mind. So again, beyond um, getting a credential into the grounds of the Palais, um, GHC offers our delegates um, some other uh, services. So one is uh, a daily GHC uh, delegate briefing that takes place usually um, in the intercon or somewhere outside of the Palais. Um, and this allows uh, not only our delegates, but also our, our members that might be going on other delegations to join us. Um, and these are really huddles to share information, um, to talk about kind of what to expect that day. Um, they tend to be pretty helpful, I think, for, for those that are trying to coordinate their schedule and get their bearings at WHA. Um, so we will again host those this year. Uh, we also have a daily email that goes out and we'll have a listserv set up um, to again uh, rehash kind of what's been going on um, during the day and what to, what's to come. Um, in addition, we host a number of side meetings with key stakeholders like members of the U.S. delegation. Um, this is, again, available for our delegates and members. Um, we'll be sharing our messages with um, our, our delegates, and we'll go into a bit more detail um, soon. And then, again, we uh, will read statements on the floor of WHA, and I'll get into that in a second as well. Um, if you are a GHC member, um, and interested in joining our delegation. There's more information available online. Um, so I've included that link here. Um, feel free to access it and email us if you do have questions. So unfortunately, Danielle can't join us for this segment. So I'm gonna go um, into detail about statements. So again, submitting statements is um, is available for GHC members um, and delegates. Um, so we've actually set up a process by which you can um, you can submit a statement uh, for review of the GHC staff at, to then submit to um, WHO um, to um, be addressed on the again on the floor of the World Health Assembly. Um, in years or in the last couple years, we've made the process a bit more collaborative, um, acknowledging that a number of our members have um, uh, priorities or the same priorities or same topics that they're following. Um, so what we've done is we've set up um, uh, sort of, a, again, a listserv where um, we we connect our members that are working together on the same topics together so that they can collaborate on a joint statement. Um, and then GHC staff will um, do their best to uh, make sure that statement is in align alignment with GHC's uh, mission and principles um, and help to kind of tie up any loose ends before submitting that statement um, again to WHO. So I provided some more information here. 
um, and there's a lot more in the, the policy that we provide it. Um, there are a couple deadlines, so we do ask that you fill out a Google survey, um, again, which is in this policy uh, document, uh, to express your interest in what statement you might want to, um, or what agenda item you want, might want to submit a statement on. Um, and then the final statement submission will be um, middle of May, right before um, the assembly starts. So I talked about the official side events, um, but now I want to get into some uh, additional side events that will be hosted outside the grounds of the Palais, or we like to call them the unofficial side events, although they are probably much larger in number than the ones that are actually take place on the grounds of the Palais. Um, so these are a couple of GHC's main um, side events that we're hosting, and actually we do have one that's included on the grounds of Palais as well. Um, we will have a, a small welcome reception um, actually at, at um, the Center for Global Development's event accelerating the development of a path-breaking universal dr drug regimen for TB. Um, so this event will um, take place Sunday evening. Um, the invitation is forthcoming probably in the next week or so um, and we'll have a small table where um, GHC delegates can pick up their badges um, and then otherwise meet and greet with one another and this will take place at again the Intercon or the Intercon Hotel which is um, right outside of the Palais. Uh, we'll also be hosting um, or we also um, uh, I guess Save the Children is um, organizing an event on the grounds of the Palais, which we are supporting um, as Global Health Council. Um, and that event actually will take place Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Um, and since the time period is so short, we're hoping to um, host an event right before um, to build um, or to kind of start talking about this civil society engagement for the Global Action Plan on SDG3. Um, and then the event within the Palais itself will look at action and accountability on UHC um, and building that momentum towards um, the UN high level meeting. Um, so we kind of see these events going hand in hand and that's something that's still being organized but more details will be shared um, in the next uh, couple weeks. Um, so in addition, I know we sent out a, um, a bit of a poll to our, our members asking what side events they were organizing. Um, at the time, it was a bit early, so I know folks were not um, hadn't finalized times or dates or venues yet, um, but did share a variety of topics that they were planning to host side events around. So I've listed just a few here. Um, if you are organizing an event and you're at a stage where you'd like to share that invitation um, more widely, uh, please do send it to events at globalhealth.org. We'll make sure that it's posted on our side event calendar. And as I mentioned, there is um, a special events calendar that we host on our website. Um, so as I mentioned, please just send your events to us and we'll make sure that it's posted there. Um, if you go there now, there are a few events already up um, on the website, um, but I know there will be many more to come. I, there's also a number of other uh, WHA side event calendars that do exist online. Um, we will only post events that are public or um, if they are invite only, only if we have contact information to refer people to. Um, so please don't contact GHC for specific event invites. Um, we unfortunately don't have control over that. Um, we're really just trying to help our members um, organize their schedules uh, when they go to the assembly. So that's kind of the purpose or the main purpose of this calendar. So now I'm gonna pass the mic over to Lois, who's gonna go through some of our core messages. Um, and just to note that we are still drafting these and we're looking for input from our members um, so that we can really have a, a set of strong messages going into the World Health Assembly. 
Well, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining. It's Lois here. Apologies for my voice. Um, a couple of us are a bit under the weather here. And actually, Liz, if you can go back to the last um, intro slide, I think what we want to do now is just take a quick pause to see if we can answer any initial questions that we have gotten on, on everything that Liz covered across side events, um, statements, um, and the like, just around the event uh, in general before we um, get into what we're hoping our core messages will be. So I think we had a few questions pop up. Um, hopefully um, those were answered throughout. Um, again, as Liz mentioned, uh, there it seems like we have a few questions specifically on the dates for specific site events. And as Liz said, there will be a calendar um, that will be available online um, that you all can reference for those. Um, but once again, just to review for those who might have missed that slide, we have a welcome reception on Sunday evening um, for GHC members and delegates. That'll be um, in partnership with another one of our member organizations. Uh, and then GHC is planting, planning, excuse me, to co-host um, an official side event with uh, Save the Children UK, who has taken the lead uh, on an event at the Palais with several other partners related to UHC. Um, per, it, um, we are hoping that um, in advance of that event on Tuesday, we have an additional event on UHC that we host um, at the press club so that the community feels like we can have a broader conversation than the 50 minutes that, we, than we've, been, that we've been allotted for the Palais. Um, but there is an additional event that, um, um, that we'll be listing on our calendar that will likely be that Monday afternoon on the Global Action Plan. Uh, and again, that is um, something that has been taking place throughout this this year led by WHO to coordinate the various global health actors around their global health initiatives and investments. Recently, um, a civil society advisory group was stood up uh, to help um, guide that process from a civil society, civil society perspective and ensure that we have voices in that space. Um, there will be a meeting actually uh, in uh, later this month uh, on the margins of the UHG multi-stakeholder meeting related to the global action plan and civil society engagement. We will also be hosting a webinar, as Liz already mentioned, um, that will touch on this. Um, but us um, having an event at WHA is our attempt to provide yet another platform for the global health community to um, have additional dialogue around that process. So again, all of that will be outlined on our calendar, but I hope that that additional information will, is useful to you. And you'll see um, as, a, as a link uh, in the sort of Q&A panel or the chat panel um, that we have provided um, a, a link to to where these events stand currently if you guys want to peruse um, the, the the events that we've already received and have posted. But as Liz said, we, we do so cautiously. We only do that with uh, having a good deal of information for you all. And so we understand there are many other calendars out there that might list um, more events than we have on ours, but we have um, some tight parameters around what we list just because we, we, we don't, we want to limit the number of questions that you all have about timing and RSGP and the like. So hopefully that they answers the questions that we got on events and it doesn't look like we have any further questions on statements and so with that I will I will move along, move us along. Um, but thanks for allowing us to pause there in the event anyone had any additional questions. So as Liz said um, you know we have this delegation uh, um, that we've been hosting for a number of years as GHG, and it's something that we've been really happy to do. Um, I think Liz has worked really hard with the team and with the delegates to ensure that in the past couple of years, we also not just have um, sort of um, a group of people that have GHG badges, but actually have a group of people that are truly speaking with one voice, um, recognizing that each of us comes to WHA for different reasons and causes. Um, so um, last year, you know, we, we really, and, and I give a lot of credit to Liz for making a really great effort to um, uh, have us coalesce around some key messages. Um, uh, and in, in years past, um, some examples of that have been, um, say, our, our tips for Tedros. We have really, um, uh, in, sorry, in the lead up to the last um, election of director general for WHO, the community came together around some key messages or core messages um, for those candidates. Um, and we really tried to promote those um, throughout WHA and in the in the months following um, uh, as an example of, of how we could speak with one voice um, around the World Health Assembly. I think last year we did something similar um, and we really focused on the diversity of our delegation as a key talking point. Um, but there are a couple of other key 
key um, priority areas at WHA for which we tried to provide um, some 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 core talking points um, for our community. So we're trying to do the same thing again this year, having looked at the agenda and again having pulled the group regarding um, kind of where you're focusing your efforts. Um, and we've settled on a few key areas for now, but again, as Liz said, this is um, sort of open for comment or input or discussion. You know, we want these webinars not just to be information that you could get online, like the calendar, but, you know, we'll allow, um, enable you to have a little bit of back and forth with the team here about our plans um, and, and with those people on the phone too. You, um, about about plans and ideas with regards to how to approach um, the meeting, whether you're one of the people who's attending or one of you who's following online. So with that, the first the first um, um, core message we we want to continue is this idea of um, the importance of engaging civil society. Um, as you all know. Um, there has been a, you know, um, ongoing dialogue at WHO about civil society engagement, and we're obviously grateful to WHO that they continue to um, allow for civil society delegations to attend. Um, you know, it's 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 it, it definitely is you know creates a bit more work um, for them and and an organization for us to a great degree. But I think we all view it as very important. And and Dr. Tedros himself has continued to echo the importance of engaging civil society. Of course, um, you know, this has not been without, you know, real questions around, um, around, you know, who's really showing up as civil society and the role that we play, the influence we have. And so we, we think that that type of dialogue is very important. Um, so much that we did offer a statement at the executive board meeting in January about civil society engagement. Um, because there was actually a proposal that was um, put forth at that meeting um, regarding how best we could be, um, we could be involved in, in, um, World Health Assembly and other WHO meetings. Um, and so while that it's, it's unclear whether or not this will be a formal part of this year's agenda, um, it will likely still be a part of the ongoing dialogue by member states and WHO staff. Therefore, we wanted to be sure we um, echoed a message, again, as one of the larger civil society delegations there around the importance of civil society. Essentially, um, you know, we talk about um, the contribution we make, not just at the global level, but also um, at the regional level with WHO. WHO offices um, and, and, and many of their events, um, as well as obviously at the country level. And so to the extent the group of people who um, is attending or even those online can continue to echo that, I think that will be important. This follows on nicely with um, the Civil Society Task Force that was co-convened by UNF, UN Foundation, and um, Results over the past year, and they uh, released a set of recommendations um, last year specific to uh, how WHO could best engage civil society. And so we're, um, we've included a link um, to that effort uh, as part of this presentation, but um, you know, as part of our talking points, uh, we'll likely uh, um, provide some some, you know, uh, uh, have those recommendations inform our core messages again around the importance of how um, non-state actors or civil society are engaged as part of World Health Assembly and other WHO dialogues. So that's that's one area of, of, of importance for us. Again, one core message, we believe that everyone in the delegation or um, across our constituency, regardless of your safe focus area or disease interests, um, can kind of help us echo. I think that will be really important um, as this continues to be a question or a part of the conversation of WHO and member states. Our next area of focus uh, around um, uh, excuse me, around uh, what this delegation and, and our and our um, friends who are following online can help us track um, is is obviously this uh, big issue of UHC. Uh, and so you'll see um, on the agenda following from the executive board meeting that universal health coverage will be a great area of focus um, at WHA. WHA, excuse me, especially in light of the upcoming high-level meeting, uh, we want to just be sure that everyone, we sure that you all are aware of the of the effort um, that's been made by um, the civil society engagement mechanism um, that's been led by Management Sciences for Health, one of our members, um, as part of their partnership with UHC 2030 at WHO. Um, but again, for those of you who haven't seen those, there are some key asks or priority actions that are put out by each of those groups, respectively, um, that we that we hope that our delegation can can help promote. 
um, as part of our, our mantra around UHG. Again, we recognize that many people have other um, additions to those asks um, related to their specific priority areas, and I think those will be welcomed by, by, by member states as part of the, the dialogue at WHA. Um, but as a foundation, um, uh, we believe that we can um, help advance um, the key asks or recommendations that have been pulled together by these other processes. Um, and so again, there are links for those included in the in the slides will be available following the webinar as well. But we wanted to propose um, these um, actions as a set um, of core messages um, that we could amplify as a group as well, alongside whatever we promote in terms of civil society and as an example of the value of civil society, frankly. Um, a third, um, sorry, um, a, a, there um, uh, Obviously, are a number of other key messages that we could um, that we could promote um, as a group, and there are others that, um, by way of example, I'll provide um, verbally. Um, but um, another another big area that's come up recently has been the area of WHO reform. Uh, and as many people are aware, there's been um, pretty um, extensive restructuring at WHO, um, and yet uh, it's unclear whether or not there has been a clear civil society statement on that. Um, I think that some of it is, um, you know, possibly comes through um, in our in our recommendations from civil society around, you know, kind of what makes for um, um, a better or any or, or the best WHO. Um, but we have, um, you know, been been actually deliberating whether or not we come together with a statement on the direct direction WHO is headed um, with how it is evolving, um, whether that's around its calls for flexible funding, um, the way that it's um, currently structured or streamlined some of its programming, um, or other changes that we've seen, uh, you know, inside um, the broader uh, the broader efforts of UN reform. Um, you know, I, this is an effort of, of us at GHG to kind of stay ahead of the curve um, and, and remain relevant um, with, the, with the recommendations that we do provide. And, you know, we recognize that a lot of us tend to be very much focused on um, the kind of priority or programmatic areas, but then often um, uh, miss um, these very important uh, process developments. Uh, and so that is uh, yet another example of, of a core message that we, we might want to develop and promote jointly. Um, as part of um, dialogues at WHA, um, but you all might have your own ideas as well. And so I think we um, invite you to provide some feedback to us in the chat box here today, um, or otherwise um, we will likely invite you to do so uh, online following the webinar. Um, but that, with that, I will pause and see if there are any questions or comments on this particular um, section of our uh, of our webinar today. And I just want to thank everyone again um, for for joining us for this and for always being um, so interested, and engaged in this in this process. So we did receive one question I think is a really important one about how we can integrate, um, and this is from Michelle, Dr. Michelle Farmer, how we can integrate larger issues of SDGs um, into our asks. Um, you know, that's, a, I think uh, we tend to be somewhat restricted or feel restricted um, by by the formal agenda at WHA when it comes to certainly our, our statements and side events, but I do think that we can do more to um, even push <laughs> member states, you know, if not at the executive board meeting when the agenda is set, then even at even at the World Health Assembly around, um, around um, the sort of broader ecosystem um, of development or the broader development environment. So, so, um, Michelle, I think that that's a really important question. I, I don't have a, a specific answer to you right now, but I think what we can do is commit to looking at ways we can um, at least, I guess, provide a shout out to um, to the SDGs in particular um, when it comes to some of our core messaging. 
I can definitely see that coming through um, in some of the UHC recommendations, and I believe some of that um, is there. But but if not, we can certainly um, do so in any comments we make on WHO reform, and even around the global action plan, which obviously is um, is geared towards advancing progress on SDG three in particular. Um, I, be, I believe we have a couple of other um, questions that have come in that um, relate more to what Liz has um, Liz has presented. So I'm going to pass the baton to her to answer those questions, and then she will also then, um, if we don't have additional questions following her response to those, um, uh, complete um, the webinar or continue um, with the remainder of this webinar. Thank you, everyone. Great, thank you, Lois, I appreciate that. So we did get a couple additional questions. Um, one is just around uh, the agenda that WHO puts out every day of the World Health Assembly. Um, so the question is that uh, when you've mentioned the agenda can vary every day, was it about the main WHA event or also including the side events? Um, so great question. Uh, I didn't explain that very well. Um, but what I meant by the agenda changing uh, was not necessarily the topics or the events that will be happening, um, but just the, the timing of the agenda items. Um, so because deliberations can take maybe longer than expected, there are, um, for instance, some agenda items that are maybe slated or slated for, let's say, um, uh, Tuesday to be discussed. Um, but because the deliberations run over, those agenda items are pushed into Wednesday's agenda and then everything is a bit off and delayed. Um, and usually it is just because some agenda items take longer than others to resolve. Um, and the uh, WHO does allow for uh, time for that deliberation and for member states to go back and forth, um, especially if it is um, about drafting resolutions to make sure that language is final. Um, but as for the technical briefings and the official member state and non um, uh, non state actor events, those do stay the same um, throughout once they are published. Um, so thanks again for um, letting me clarify that. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, and I did also have a slide on the agenda topics themselves, but I realized that it got deleted in the slide deck, so apologies for that. Um, I did wanna go into a bit more detail about um, some of the agenda items. Obviously we mentioned a couple, one being UHC um, and looking at WHO reform, but there are a number of other topics such as access to medicines, um, looking at, uh, uh, I guess, developments uh, after the high-level meetings last year on NCDs and TB. Um, there's also a number of other financial and governance matters that we are following closely. Um, and apologies for not having that slide to look at them in more detail. But as I mentioned, the next webinar is all about that deeper dive um, into some of those topics. Um, so this was just to be kind of more of an overview to get you started on where to go and start looking at that preliminary information. Um, so we also had another question just about when WHO will formally be opening up the WHA portal. Um, so yes, yeah, some of these links I was able to find or that were sent to me from WHO. So I think they are still kind of rolling out everything online. Um, I'm sure part of that is just making sure everything's final or as final as final as can be before posting it. Um, but I would say likely in the next couple weeks, um, there'll be more documents uploaded. Um, uh, and like I said, including that preliminary journal that will come out. Um, so I usually just kind of check back on a regular basis to see what's uploaded. Um, so that would be my advice again to you all. So yeah, if there are any other additional questions, please send them, um, please send them in through the chat box. Um, including messaging or, mess or questions about the core messaging that we just discussed. Um, but I will continue on just to a couple additional slides. Um, so following along uh, with our core messages, um, we will have a social media toolkit um, and content that will be shared um, in the days leading up to um, uh, WHA. 
Um, so we'll be putting together this social media guide uh, based on some of these draft messages that we've talked about. Um, we again encourage you to send um, your feedback to us so that we can make sure we're producing messaging that really speaks to the entire community. Um, we'll be we'll do our best to incorporate as many messages as we can, knowing that there are many of them. Um, but otherwise, we'll serve as a platform for you to share your specific messages at WHA. Um, so we're really looking forward to promoting your campaigns. Um, I know there are many of them and we've been involved with some in, in prior years and we look forward to continue to promote them. Um, and as I mentioned, we have a listserv that um, anyone is um, able to sign up for regardless of whether or not you are a GHC delegate or member. Um, if you are following from afar, um, these kind of social media alerts or daily emails could be helpful to get a sense of what's going on um, on the ground since there tends to be so many different events and meetings all at once. It's kind of hard to keep track of everything. And just a reminder as, a reminder as you're building out your own messaging and campaigns to make sure you use the hashtag WHA72, which will be the main hashtag for the World Health Assembly to make sure that we have more traction on social media. Um, feel free to tag us um, if you have additional comments or if you don't feel like emailing, you wanna tweet at us, you can certainly do that as well. Um, try to take pictures if you can, include captions if possible and, and send them to us um, while you are um, at WHA. Um, and then of course, send any additional takeaways to us at events at globalhealth.org. So that's all the formal content I have for you now, but I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. Um, I'll just pause for a minute to let you type your answer uh, into the chat box and send it to us. So we did get a question about joining the listserv. Um, I just shared a link to our World Health Assembly page on GHC's website. Um, this includes all the information you could ever want it and more hopefully um, about our activities at WHA, including a link um, to sign up for our listserv, which will be essentially a Google group um, where we will share information um, with the group. And it looks like we have another question um, from someone in Pakistan, um, Dr. Kamran, who asked specifically about, I believe if I'm gathering your question correctly, um, the role of independent um, health workers um, and professionals uh, in implementation of the SDGs. And I, I would maybe even add broadly around um, um, global health policy and advocacy. So this is a is another good question and it's a I think it's one that we've been grappling with here at GHG as well. Um, really kind of what defines um, or who is included in kind of civil society advocacy and trying to ensure that that's not only um, um, prominent organizations but 
important individuals at the ground level um, who are who are doing this work on a daily basis. Liz mentioned briefly that we're um, you know we're, we're we we have encouraged and we will have. Um, and of individual advocates uh, as part of um, our delegation and as part of an initiative that we've um, continued since last year to, to promote the voices of individuals, providers, and patients um, at, at these types of events. We don't have the resources to accommodate um, the great demand I think there is out there for it, um, but it's something that we've are trying to model and demonstrate um, so that other organizations um, that might have more resources or access to those resources um, can do something similar. And it's also something that, honestly, we have talked to staff at WHO at the global and regional level about. So um, I have not been in, in touch with with Ciro about this specifically, but I've had conversations more recently with Pajo and Afro, who I know um, are committed, um, have staff who are committed to, to answering this question again in WHO's attempt to really meaningfully engage um, um, non-state actor partners in civil society specifically. Um, there are people who want to again get beyond the usual suspects and kind of organizational um, advocacy and, and collaboration to to um, models of, 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 of individual advocacy. Um, and so we are you know hoping to inform some of those processes and continue to encourage that to, again uh, model that to the extent that we can. Um, but if you have thoughts or ideas um, specifically as to you know how you think that can happen, um, I think we welcome those. Um, as we learn of opportunities for civil society, we do try to ensure those get um, sort of shared um, with a, a broad network uh, so that everyone kind of has that opportunity. Um, but we do recognize that's a challenge, and it's one of the reasons why, at the very least, um, GHG does have our advocacy network and a couple of other vehicles or mechanisms whereby folks can Whereby, whereby folks can um, um, sign it or sign up um, and, and sign on to to campaigns or calls to action. Um, so at minimum, we're hoping that you know if you are an individual champion who cares about these issues, that you are um, engaging um, the, um, through our our campaigns. You know, signing up for listservs either through GHC or through one of our partners to stay abreast of um, relevant and pressing global health issues um, and really lending your voice to those asks um, whenever uh, whenever you're invited to do so. I hope that is a, a somewhat helpful answer to that very important question. Thank you. So it looks like we don't have any additional questions at this time, um, but feel free again to send your questions to events at globalhealth.org uh, if you do um, now and in the future. Uh, again, we'll be uh, putting these slides together and making them public so that you can access all the links that we've provided here today. Um, so hopefully this is helpful again in your preparation and just to give you again a very brief preview of what's to come at the upcoming World Health Assembly. Um, just a quick note that our next webinar will take place again on Friday, April 26th at 9 a.m. Um, and this will be that deeper dive into um, some of the agenda items uh, slated um, to be discussed at the upcoming uh, World Health Assembly. Thanks again for participating and I hope um, everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Bye.